Hello and welcome to a Straight Talk. I'm Aisha Subarkash. The war in Ukraine made a fragile global energy market even worse. Over the past year, the Western countries saw prices skyrocket after Russian energy companies were hit with sanctions. The shortage renewed the push for alternate sources, even the nuclear option. But as many countries in Europe shut their nuclear plants down, Turkey went in the other direction by delivering the first batch of fuel to its first nuclear power plant. With delivery of nuclear fuels by air and sea to our power plant, Akkuyu has now gained the status of a nuclear plant. Turkey has risen to the league of countries with nuclear power in the world, albeit after a 60-year delay. Akkuyu will also change Turkey's economy and energy sectors. That's according to the International Atomic Energy Agency chief Mariana Grossi who attended the opening ceremony. Russia's state atomic energy company Rosatom is building the Akkuyu nuclear plant. Located in Mersin off Turkey's southern coast, the $20 billion plant is set to generate 35 billion kilowatt hours of electricity a year, about 10 percent of Turkey's total needs. Many countries phased out nuclear power following the 2011 Fukushima disaster, including Germany, which shut down its last atomic reactors earlier this month. But as the global energy crisis continues, could nuclear power be the viable alternative? And to discuss the significance of the Akkuyu nuclear power plant for Turkey and the region, joining me now from London is Jonathan Kopp. He is uh, the spokesperson at the World Nuclear Association. And from Ankara, Ivan Staradupsev. He's a political analyst specializing on Turkish-Russian relations. Gentlemen, welcome to Straight Talk. It's good to have you on the program. So, Jonathan, the first batch of uh, nuclear fuel has been delivered to Turkey's first nuclear power plant. How significant is this for Turkey and its energy industry? I think it is very significant. Uh, this is the first delivery of fuel. Construction is continuing uh, on the plant and that is expected to have the first unit uh, starting up next year. And when all four units are running, that's going to be supplying Turkey with 10% uh, of its electricity and that electricity will be low carbon, it will be uh, supporting its energy security and helping keep a cleaner air. You've mentioned the energy security, but is this also a step forward for an energy self-sufficient country in the long term? Yes, I think it is, because this is something where fuel is delivered to nuclear power plants. Um, they use the fuel in the reactor core for three years. So there's much less chance of disruption to supplies than can happen with uh, uh, fossil fuel supply pipelines. So, Ivan, President Erdogan said Turkey has now gained nuclear uh, facility status. Is it more a symbolic or something more concrete? I, I think that this is a quite concrete. Uh, Turkey resolves a number of very important strategical issues uh, for itself. First of all, as a previous speaker said, the previous speaker said, uh, Turkey got a very significant amount of electricity generated by this power plant. First of all, second of all, second of all, uh, Turkey uh, got uh, necessary technologies and experience, which allows it to look forward to get new power plants. And uh, we know the statements about AUASH that it is planning already to move forward together with the second power plant Sinop. So I think those uh, statements by Mr. Erdogan, they're quite uh, specific and well, well, have a really solid ground. So Jonathan, can you talk to us about the strategic importance of this uh, power plant for Turkey's energy security in detail? Because how would that contribute to Turkey's efforts to diversify its energy resources moving forward? Well, Turkey already has quite a diverse uh, energy supply. So electricity is generated from coal and gas, uh, hydro, and there's a small but growing amount of electricity generation from solar and wind. Mm -hmm. But what nuclear does is add another fuel supply to that mix. And the, the more fuel supplies that you have, the greater diversity, the greater security. And in contrast to solar and wind, what nuclear does is generate low carbon electricity 24 seven with very high reliability. Mm -hmm. So you need to be able to rely on your electricity supplies. Wind and solar aren't always there. Nuclear can provide a very complementary secure supply of electricity to add to that mix. So Ivan, what does a Turkey with a nuclear uh, power mean 
or its imminent neighborhood. I mean, is it likely to change some power balances in disputed areas? Uh, I think nuclear power, it, it is a kind of a ticket uh, to a high, high, high level uh, power club. Uh, because not so many countries are utilizing the nuclear energy in the region. In the Middle East, we know just an experience of Iran, so Turkey is uh, going this way. Also showing its significance uh, to another countries as a party who could cooperate together with Russia uh, in constructing uh, power plants. Uh, we know that Russia is negotiating, for example, nuclear power plants in Egypt and together with normalization of the ties between Egypt and Turkey, yes. it might be, a real, might be a reality where Russia and uh, Turkey together will cooperate in, in the construction of nuclear power plants in Egypt. It is just one but very solid example. And Jonathan, uh, let me understand this. What's at stake uh, for Russia in providing Turkey with nuclear technology? Because it will eventually, I mean, it would mean that it will sell less natural gas uh, to Ankara in the long run. I mean, what's at stake for Russia? Well, for Russia, they may be selling less gas, but instead they'll be supplying the nuclear fuel for the power station. So it is it is a switch in terms of uh, the energy supplies that Russia will be making, transforming away from fossil fuels towards nuclear energy. So there are benefits for both parties. Some argue, uh, Ivan, that uh, this power plant and more down the line could become a tool to advance Russian interests in the region. Would you agree? Uh, actually, I would be quite accurate to comment on this because it is always a question of interdependence and uh, how much uh, Turkey depends on Russian nuclear fuel and uh, uh, the operation of this power plant. Russia also depends on Turkish electricity market because uh, at, at the end of the day, we are already investing more than 20 billion US dollars in these nuclear power plants, not having any any, corruption, any Turkish lira from, from the budget. Uh, so I think it is interdependence always. Uh, so, but I believe I believe that of course uh, our presence in Turkey op opens us a uh, door to new markets, new construction sites uh, in the region. As I said, in Egypt, maybe in Saudi Arabia, maybe in other countries. So, um, Jonathan, how has the uh, current energy crisis due to the war in uh, Ukraine reignited the nuclear uh, power debate in some European countries? Because we know that Germany just shut down its uh, last plans earlier this month. So do you think this is going to be permanent? I think so. I think governments in Europe have looked at the way they were securing their energy. They were reliant on Russia for a lot of supplies of gas, and they're looking to diversify away from that. And one of the ways in which several country, countries are choosing to do that is to start up again and accelerate the deployment of nuclear energy in their countries, again, to give them that diversity and energy security that they're seeking. So, um, Ivan, is Europe phasing out on nuclear power when it really needs it the most. So has there been a miscalculation on Europe's side uh, when it comes to abandoning nuclear energy? Uh, actually, nuclear energy, it is a reliable source of electricity. Uh, in terms of ecology environment, it is a uh, very, very much, uh, very, very much green energy. And uh, what is most important, it uh, gives you a permanent level of electricity in your grid. Uh, what makes it different from a, from a solar power plants or from wind power, wind power plants. So I think uh, they are so much early in terms of cutting their nuclear reactors. Mm -hmm. It is, you know, uh, they, are, they are not ready to provide uh, some alternative to this. So I think uh, they made kind of miscalculation. You're fully right. So, Jonathan, we see Europe is moving away from uh, nuclear energy, um, but several Asian countries, including Japan, India, Pakistan, are restarting their nuclear plants, which have been idle for a while. And recently, the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia and Egypt have expressed interest in building their own nuclear energy power plants. So, is the world divided between the East and the West uh, when it comes to acquiring nuclear energy? I mean, where is this headed? 
Well, I think what has happened over the last 20 years is that we've seen in the East a lot of growth in nuclear energy. But nuclear energy is still very important in the West as well. And, and really, Europe itself as a whole is not turning away from nuclear energy. It is Germany alone that has made this decision to phase out its reactors. We're seeing new builds starting in the UK, in France, Belgium extending the operation of their reactors, the Netherlands announcing that they're looking to build new reactors. So I think what is happening in a way is that the West are now catching up with that acceleration of nuclear energy that we have seen in the East. So, uh, Jonathan, again to you, how would the revival of uh, nuclear energy, as you've mentioned, impact Western plans to reach zero emissions in the coming decades? Well, boosting nuclear energy can only help in achieving that goal. Nuclear energy is one of the forms of low carbon electricity there is. And frankly, over the last 20 or 30 years, the percentage of fossil fuels in the generation mix worldwide has stayed at around 60, 65 percent. We simply have not been making enough progress just at a time when countries are saying they want to reach net zero. So we need a very dramatic acceleration in the deployment of nuclear energy alongside all the other low carbon options. And the program that Turkey has to build its first plant, but then looking at its second plant, possibly a third plant, these are exactly the steps that countries worldwide should be taking. So, Ivan, why didn't you think Turkey build uh, nuclear plants earlier? And what do you make of the timing, especially at a moment uh, when global energy prices are uh, surging around the world? Uh, of course, uh, of course, Turkey tried to, to do it uh, for a long, long, long time. We are aware of this fact, and the reason was very much clear. Uh, the entrance ticket to nuclear power plant operation, uh, the price of it is, is quite high. And uh, practically, this is a very first power plant, nuclear power plant, which is operating on the built operate own model. Before that, uh, there was no such an example. So nuclear power plant Akuyu uh, is, uh, is uh, the first example. And I would say that the uh, Turkish government is quite, was quite creative to find a model which will allow them uh, just uh, to save their budget and uh, to invite investor, uh, as I said, first time in the history. Because normally governments are doing the, those kind of investments by themselves and uh, just inviting contractors to do this job. Uh, this time Turkey made a very creative step and uh, we have to congratulate them. All right, gentlemen, unfortunately, we'll have to leave it here. Thank you very much for joining me on Straight Talk. Thank you.